topic for today. And my favorite thing about this topic is that I've got a pretty fun analogy. It brings back good memories of when I lived in San Francisco and uh, there's a dance club there. And so I have my dance club analogy whenever I'm talking about equilibrium, but specifically when I'm talking about dynamic equilibrium. All right, dynamic equilibrium. So uh, maybe first we could just um, say, well, well, what do we mean when we're even talking about equilibrium? What does that mean? And so then we can take it a step further and talk about what does dynamic equilibrium mean? All right, so I think uh, since we're talking about chemistry, why not use a chemistry example? And I like to start out using really simple molecules so that we don't get too overwhelmed. All right, so we could think about, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe hydrogen, the simplest molecule that there is. So let's put up a hydrogen molecule. And hydrogen, naturally at room temperature, it is a gas. Okay, so there's not a lot of hydrogen in our air right now, uh, but we can certainly, that's something we can make, uh, we can collect, and it's, uh, okay, it's fairly stable, but it's also flammable, all right? So uh, if you've heard about that horrible disaster of the Hindenburg, uh, that big Zeppelin that caught fire because it was fill, filled with uh hydrogen and now we use helium which makes way more sense it's light and it's non-reactive but in any case um, that was a disaster uh, but my point here is that hydrogen h2 is a gas at room temperature and it can react with another non-metal that can also exist in the gas phase and that is i2 iodine now, iodine, it does exist as this beautiful, solid crystal that is this deep violet color. It's quite lovely. So it is a solid at room temperature, but this is the thing, is that it's also volatile. Meaning, just like water, when you have a pot of water, and above that liquid water, even though water is liquid at room temperature, there are gas molecules of water that are vaporizing above it. And that's the same thing with iodine. When you have a solid crystal of iodine, there's some of it that is released as gas molecules that are coming off of there. And if that happens in the presence of hydrogen gas, they can react together and they can give hydrogen iodide, also in the gas phase. And so I'm gonna draw, notice I'm drawing this arrow up, uh, giving, leaving me a little bit of space, because we're gonna show how this is in equilibrium. And it, show, it forms hydrogen iodide, also gas phase, but we need to make sure this chemical reaction is balanced, right? We need to have mass balance. If we have two hydrogens on this side and we have two iodides and iodines, iodine atoms on this side, then we need to make sure that that's true on this side as well. So that's why we put in that two stoichiometric coefficient. All right, so now we've got this balanced chemical reaction. And at first glance, this is great. Nothing wrong with it. Looks good. Thumbs up. Okay, but is this really what is happening on the molecular level? If we were able to go in with some kind of microscope, which we can't do with molecules too well, there's tricks there, but anyway, if we were able to look in and see these molecules and what they were doing, we would see that yes, indeed, we've got hydrogen iodine that are reacting together and forming HI. But we would also notice that there was something else happening. What is happening? We would see that those HI molecules are breaking apart and they're going essentially backwards 
and they're reforming the original reactants, the hydrogen, the iodine. And so to really show what's going on, we would want to show a backwards arrow as well to convey what is happening with this chemical reaction. And so we call this a chemical equilibrium. Now, when we use the word chemical reaction in a generic sense, we're usually talking about reactants and products, and it's often convenient to just ignore the fact that it is actually an equilibrium, but everything is actually an equilibrium. It is. <laughs> it's just convenient to not have to say it all the time. So this is this whole idea here is what I want to get into in terms of talking about dynamic equilibrium. So we've got these molecules, H2, I2. Some of them are colliding and just bouncing off of each other and not reacting, but some are colliding in a certain way and they're creating the products. And then we've got these breaking apart and then reforming these reactants. This is constantly happening, constantly. And so the molecules that are over here are not always going to be the same atoms that they were two minutes ago. Some of those atoms might be back over here. And then two minutes later, some of those atoms that were over here are now back over there. So when we reach equilibrium, and that is, what's the definition of equilibrium? This is when the concentrations stop changing. So the beginning of a chemical reaction, we have a lot of the reactants and they start forming products. And then eventually it reaches this equilibrium where concentrations aren't changing anymore. And we're tempted to think everything is stopped. All of these that have collided to form that, they're done. They can kick back. All right, nothing more to do here. But no, these molecules are continually moving, which makes perfect sense, right? We are above absolute zero. What's happening at absolute zero, in theory, because you can't reach absolute 0, 0. 0.00000, but we've gotten pretty darn close. 0.0001 or something, Kelvin, but right at absolute zero, essentially all molecular motion has slowed down and almost stopped. Okay, that's an absolute zero though. What are we at? We're at oh, 290, depending on where you are right now, I think I'm about 298 Kelvin room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So right now, these molecules, they're gonna be moving. They're gonna be moving and they're going to be changing. So that's where this idea of dynamic equilibrium comes in, is that sure, the total concentration of the reactants and the total concentration of the products isn't changing, but are those molecules moving? Yes, they are. Are they changing their direction, their motion? Yes, they are. They're moving a lot. And this is where my dance club analogy comes in. All right? So back in the 90s, I lived in San Francisco, late 90s, and there was a dance club called The End Up. I think because, you know, like 3 a.m. on a Saturday night, that's where you ended up, or at least they wanted you to. All right, so The End Up, it was this really tall building and uh it was actually kind of fun i remember i don't know why but i went shopping grocery shopping early on a sunday morning and i drove past the end up and uh, i saw people uh leaving at that point and i was like oh this is interesting and this analogy emerged a couple of years later when i was teaching equilibrium and i was like hey that's like the end up so this is the deal is that there is some point in for a club when people start to arrive now before that what do you have in the club 
you've got the bartenders, you've got the bouncers, you have other people, the DJs and all that. So there are a few people that are in here and I'll just draw them um, little, I'm not even draw stick figures. I'm just gonna draw little lines. Okay, so there's a few people in here and the people who are outside in line, they start coming in, they start entering. Now, what's true about a crowded club or concert or something like that in terms of the fire marshal? What does the fire marshal have to say about that? We can only have a certain number of people in there, right? So there's some capacity. And so what does eventually happen? These people start coming in, the bouncers letting them in, and the end up starts getting full. All right, so lots of people in there, and then it reaches capacity. And you know why I like this, that it's a dance club? It's because what are these people doing? They are dancing, okay? And I love that because what are the molecules doing? They are moving, dancing, okay? This constant motion. But... What happens? You're like at the end up and it's like, I don't like this DJ, I wanna check out this other one. So you bail and people begin to leave, right? All right, so what happens when three people leave? The bouncer lets three more people in, so then they get to go in as they go, but because those three people left, those three, three different people came in, we still have that capacity, we have 250 people, let's say, that are in there. They're still moving, different people in, different people go. And that keeps happening, different people in, different people go, but there's still that 250 person capacity that's filling this dance club, all right? So this is essentially what has happened here once it's filled and when there's that molecular motion, people dancing, but there are different people coming in, different people leaving. That is that same idea of dynamic equilibrium where we have these atoms that are colliding and they're forming that. These molecules over here, they're breaking apart, or I should say these are molecules colliding, that we've got, once equilibrium is reached, we've got this steady concentration of the reactants and the products, so that's not changing just like the number of people in the dance club is not changing, but there's still motion. It's not like everything stopped. There's still motion. There's still different atoms doing different things. All right, so that is our concept of dynamic equilibrium. Lots of motion, but steady concentrations.